If you want to skip straight to the experiment, then I recommend watching the chapters. There's three of them. There's going to be three main ones. Um, the first is me actually demonstrating the airlock, and then the experiment, and then results. I'm going to graph them out and everything. So I'm excited for that. But before, I just want to say, if people want me to start missiles again, I will. But I want to switch my focus over to space stuff and watercraft because I don't have any watercraft and the space is completely new. I'm really excited. I instantly bought the deal. Like the second it became available, I bought it. And I do not regret it, to be honest. Even if the update's broken, I, you know, to be honest, just a little controversy real quick. I don't see why that warrants death threats and like the mass downvote. Like if you don't like the game, don't play it. Don't ruin it for everyone else, you know? But that's just my take on it. Anyways, on to the airlocks. So I built these myself. They work by taking the pressure difference between the two compartments, analyzing it, and determining whether or not you need to fill or empty the tank or the compartment, sorry, the airlock, whatever. So if we go through here, you know, it, it, it's a normal airlock. It has pumps that take out the air. Uh, I will talk about these a little bit later, but actually I'll talk about those at the end, sorry. So yeah, it just works exactly like an airlock does. It changes the pressure difference in here so it fits the two different environments. Now, if you want to take a guess at where the air is coming from and going, then you get a virtual cookie. You get a chance at six in this video, I believe. So do I have a spacesuit? Yes, I don't want to die. Okay. You have until the barometric pressure reaches 0 0.05 atmospheres. And half of a half, a half of a tenth of an atmosphere. Okay. If you guessed from the main compartment into the airlock and out into the void, you were correct. But why is that a problem? Well, it's because if you have air coming in to the airlock and then just leaving, the net change in air is going to be negative. You're going to continue to lose air. And you don't want that because if you lose air, you lose oxygen. And if you lose air, you lose pressure. And the human in this world and in real life cannot survive without oxygen or in low or high pressure environments. But how do we fix that problem? How do we conserve air so that we don't have to refill it more often or so we don't have to do a bunch of weird electrolyzing stuff so early on? And that's what this experiment is about. So the experiment is what effect do tanks have on the air conservation of airlocks? We already talked about how this one might waste a lot of air, but how might this one save air instead? You can see that we have tanks on the side that are connected to the airlock. So instead of the airlock taking air from the compartment and dumping it into the vacuum, we have air that's going into the tanks and back out again into the airlock. So the goal is to reduce the amount of air that leaves the airlock via decomp uh, decompressing or by... Um, What's it called? I don't know, just minute losses. So I'm going to start the experiment in here. We're going to do three trials for each. I'm essentially just going to leave and re-enter the airlock three times. I'm going to graph all the results. I'm going to save them all in a spreadsheet and show you at the end so you don't have to worry about any of that. But I that's not supposed to happen, by the way. I need to fix that still. But I'll reset these and meet you in this one. Alright, to start off, I want to show you two things. One is the total air level at 99.78% right now. If you can guess what this is at the end of the three trials and what the barometric pressure is going to be at, at the end, then you get a virtual cookie for each. And you can change your answer up until the last trial. Now, I will be keeping track of these and I will be keeping track of the time it takes to go from the airlock to the compartment whenever the airlock has no air. And I'll also be keeping track of, um, yeah, there's one more thing, but I don't know. I'll see it on the spreadsheet. So let's just start the trials. I will pause in between separate trials to tell you anything interesting that I notice. So you don't have to miss out on anything exciting. All right. First trial is complete. The total air level has dropped to 80.89% and the barometric pressure has dropped to... 0.7614 atmospheres so you can change your answers if you want 
Um, I didn't notice anything really interesting in this trial, but hopefully there's going to be something fun in the next one. Alright, the second trial has been completed. Something I did notice is that it took significantly less time to go from the airlock into the main compartment. So, barometric pressure has dropped to 0 0.6194 atmospheres, and the air level has dropped to 65.79%. Um, I will show you the times at the end, I'm not going to tell you them throughout, but let's move on to what I believe is our final trial for this compartment. Alright, the final trial has been concluded, and the, I'll start with the barometric pressure, that, don't. The barometric pressure dropped to 0 0.5046 atmospheres, and the final, um, percentage is... 53.60% so by entering and exiting the airlock three times we've used almost half of the entire air in this entire area including the airlocks volume as well and the pressure has dropped by what was it almost exactly half an atmosphere which is significant because the lower the pressure the less e like you need pressure in this game to survive and too little or too high and you die. Alright, I've just transferred myself to the other compartment, so we're going to get the start values. 99.85% for the total air level, and the barometric pressure is 0 0.9414 atmospheres. Take your guesses, again, you can change your answers, two cookies for each. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and start the experiment, same rules and everything as last time, so yeah. Alright, the first trial has been concluded. The barometric pressure has gone to 0 0.9448 atmospheres, and the total air level has gone to 100.37. Alright, so something I did notice as well is that because of the way I had to set this up, I will explain at the end, but one, the air went up, and two, um, the, it sounded a lot different. It wasn't a loud, like, it was more like a soft, gentle fan and electronic sound. I'll let you hear on the next trial. All right, for the second trial, I noticed it took a little bit less time the sound is a little different, but otherwise it was fairly normal. So the barometric pressure has dropped to zero, or maybe risen, to 0 0.9457 atmospheres, and the total air level has gone to 100.46%. So, uh, one more trial, and uh, make sure to get your values in if you want to. You have one more go, pretty much. Alright, that was the final trial. Make sure you have all your um, all your values or your guesses in. I noticed that time it took a little bit less time, only like a what twenty milliseconds, I think. So the total error level has risen to one hundred point six six, and the barometric pressure has risen to zero point nine four seven six atmospheres. So what did we learn from this experiment? Well, we learned that with the way you have to set up these tanks, which I will explain you actually increase the amount of air you have and even if the amount of air is decreasing the amount is significantly less than that without conserving tanks in this compartment here we lost half of our air and pressure by not using tanks but with we increased the pressure and increased the amount of air significantly and so I can come to the conclusion that having tanks to conserve air in an airlock will save you a lot of air. That's a lot of words air. So the reason why the air is increasing is because there's an issue with the 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 pressure comparisons whenever there is no air. Because if I set these all to zero, there it's just gonna glitch out. There's a weird bug. So I had to put on a small little tank on here and obviously it has a little bit of air inside but 
that's why the amount was increasing each time so that's why it was increasing but if we were to take that out of consideration we can assume that the amount of air would stay about the same we would lose a little bit each time but not nearly as much as this so now let me graph my data and then show you what we have 